you know, we've been reading a lot of fantasy books over the years. And, and one of the things that a lot of them do is they incorporate a map. They've created a world that has certain geographic features. And I can't help but noticing there's certain things that come up again and again and again. Yeah. I thought we should talk about that. What I love a good things, map. Yeah. And what the are the kind one. of things you got to have in your geography if you're going to do a fantasy world? <laughs> Welcome to Fantasy for the Ages. We're here to talk about geography. I was good at that once upon a time. So not you actually, yeah, like went on and to the state level competitions of the geography bee. Twice and the third time I um, threw. Yeah, you threw it so a friend could have a chance. And that was nice of you. But geography is a cool thing. I always enjoy geography as well. And thus, it's not a shock that we kind of like the geography and the stories that we read. Sometimes. But usually, even if it's bad, I enjoy that it exists. There are common themes we find in a lot of the worlds created by fantasy authors. And, you know, it's kind of like almost you have to have certain things in your mm -hmm. story mm -hmm. if you're going to be a solid fantasy story. So I thought we, yeah, let's try to come up with a list here today. What are the things you got to have? Okay. You definitely have to have mountains, right? You got to have some significant mountains that are part of the story. Definitely. They need to be uh, harder to traverse or like inaccessible in some way. There needs to be the ability to either block something off or hide something away in mountains. It's like always there. Yep. Yep. Sometimes you can have a really challenging pass to get through the mountains. Sometimes you can have a secret route under the mountains. Sometimes you have to go around the mountains. But you're dealing with mountains. That's just part of just about every fantasy story I know. And as dumb and obvious as that sounds, I'm about to say one that is dumber and more obvious. You gotta have a north. And that sounds super, super <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> you don't need east, west, or south, but you gotta have a north. I want you to look at almost every fantasy series that has a map and has a region and has stuff. Go look at their north. It is going to be the cold, a uh, little more rugged, maybe a little less civilized, the north kind of thing. Look at your first law trilogy. Go look at your... Uh, Game of Thrones. Malazan, Book of the Fallen is the opposite. Just because it's, it's in the south, south doesn't mean they, it's not the north. <laughs> it is still the trope of the north. The, the other north. world place okay. in one of the geographic directions that is this other thing. That is this barbaric place. It's, you always need a the north. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, you need significant rivers. Mm. Rivers end up posing key features in the plot lines of stories, whether it's a river that you're using for travel and you have adventures going down the river, or it's the river that becomes a problem because you have to cross it, or it's a barrier you can't cross and you've got a horde behind you. And what do you do? You think of people falling off of cliffs down into the river and perishing or surviving, but going into new travails. You think of rivers that magically come to help. I mean, there's so many factors and features involved with rivers. And, well, there are a lot of rivers around the world, but I can think of plenty of stories that have nothing to do with a river. I can't really think of fantasy stories that don't include rivers in significant ways. What's another one? This is going to be a little bit of a I enjoy it for the world building, but also a critique of books in general. <laughs> okay. You need a lot more map than you have story take place in. Because <laughs> almost everything that includes a map has multiple regions that are interesting and built out and diverse. And you maybe spend a chapter in that place in the entire series. <laughs> it's like this place exists. It is super well thought out. And maybe the author will come up with a series later on that takes place there or involves it more. Or maybe we'll get to that region eventually. But I mean, even let's look at the Wheel of Time and we never did get 
a, a continuation, a series that takes place over in Shandar. The rest of the world, we have a very small bit that's on this map. There's a rest of the world somewhere. Look at the big map of Middle Earth. It's on a, it's one of the cutout edges map things. What's on the part of the map that continues and you don't see it? Or what about the Undying Lands and all the rest? We get it some here and there in the Silmarillion at least. But there's a lot of stuff that you don't go into. And one for me recently was like the first Law Trilogy where we've got a whole other like big area and continent that we don't really explore yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe we do in continuation books that we haven't I haven't read yet. But you get it in the map in the first book. Okay. So you need interesting, not plot relevant places. <laughs> Now, of course, every one of these maps needs towns and cities. You never see a fantasy tale where it's nothing but an open plain. I've never come across that. There are key destination points plotted out there. Some being, again, small little villages. Some being large metropolises. And they get detailed, more interesting, depending on how big they are. What kind of wall do they have? What kind of fortifications do they have? Are they up against a cliff? Are they surrounded? You know, it's an island with only a couple of key bridges. There's a lot of fascinating things they do with the cities that are built throughout here using the geography of the land. So it's not just that they're cities, but that how they are structured. Are they on a hillside? Are they in a valley, uh, easily or difficultly defended. A lot of variety there, and the geography comes into play big time. Next thing that I will mention on a good fantasy map, in my opinion, you need political lines. You need to draw different nations' separations because a good fantasy book has political intrigue of some sort. Even if it's not deep into it, if it's not the main focus... The idea that there are multiple places that exist that you can go to, that you can travel, matters. Okay. Now that's more maps, so political geography, than physical geography, for sure. It's still maps. Well, we're talking geography more than maps. But if I look at a map and I'm going, if I go to the geography bee and they're asking me, what country is this thing in? Okay. So you're saying there are... Borders. There are countries. Yeah. There are. There, we'll go with that. Yes, and that's very commonly how they are. Another thing that you gotta have in these fantasy worlds, you have to have, and this kind of sometimes is the north that you were talking about, mm-hmm. but you have to have undesirable locations. That was one of the things on my list. Yeah. Places nobody likes to go. It's hard to survive. Often they end up having to go there, Mm -hmm. but sometimes they just have to deal with going around it. You know, it's the place no one wants to, maybe it's the pit of despair, maybe it's the Aiel Waste, maybe it is the Northland, beyond the wall, whatever. It's a common feature in fantasy geography. Some place sucks and you don't want to go there. And pretty typically, if some place sucks and you don't want to go there, something bad is from there too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I've got another one waiting, but do you have one? Uh, You kind of just stole the one I had uh, in reserve there, so go ahead and go with your next. There is very commonly a significant woods, a forest. Uh, It's not, this one's not universal. It's not. But very common. There's a significant wood or forest that plays a, a role almost a character in the story, whether it's the home of the elves, whether it's the mysterious place where no one ever comes back out, whether it's the favorite home and safe haven for your main characters, like the Ogier Groves, you mm-hmm. know, in Wheel of Time. There's there's something to do with the woods, with the forests that are just, tend to be significant in fantasy geography. And so you'll see them on maps. This is the, you know, Mirkwood. This is the Fanghorn Forest. There's something like that in most of our maps. Again, not all, 
Like that that doesn't play a big role in Malazan Book of the Fallen. Significant significant forests. The one we said before, the horrible spots no one wants to go. Yeah, that that's true. Mm -hmm. But not forests necessarily. So this one, like I said, is not universal, but common. You're looking at a big map right Wait, now. I'm looking at a big map and going like, is there anything that I feel needs to be stated here? We may have been pretty comprehensive already. I mean, there's lots of things I can enjoy on a map, but th that's a lot of the things that like need to be on a map, right? I got one more. What you got for me? Islands. There's almost always some islands in some way. It might just be an island in the middle of a river. That's a key location. It might be those pirate islands off the coast a little bit. It might be the mysterious islands that we're journeying to. But and it might be something that just makes it look better. And sometimes it's just to break it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, add a little I mean, character. Let's throw some islands out here. I'm looking at the map of Middle Earth up on my wall. There is not a single island that has any relevance on this map. And There's yet there are little islands. things here and there. Breaks up a river, makes it a little bit more interesting looking at the outlet of that river, kind of as a bay. There's like uh -huh. a bunch of islands that make a delta. No one but draws like, a fantasy it. map without islands. They just, they don't. Even if it's an island in the middle of a lake, they'll stick I mean, an island in there. In the same way that you don't draw a fantasy map at least if you're not trying to draw a good fantasy map, with smooth edges. You always make it weird and Cranky janky. coasts. Because that's how coasts work, usually. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we're somewhat sticking to reality there. Yeah. All right. I think that's enough. Those are the key elements that we see in all these fantasy worlds that we go to. And if you're going to write a story, you're using the geography to guide the narrative in some interesting ways. So you plot this out as part of designing the world. I recently read R.E. Sanders' uh, Demon's Tear, book one of the Jantakai saga that he's starting. It's epic fantasy. Yeah. And he it's a great illustration. He's got this whole world he's created. He's already done a couple of different stories in this world, standalones. Yet they're somewhat connected, especially the second one to this saga now, but it, he's just been building out this world. And mm -hmm. the geography of the world is a huge element of the story he tells. And that's what most fantasy authors do. They don't just eh, randomly make a map. They're thinking through, what are my characters going to do here? What's the quest? What's the challenge? What journeys will be involved? I know Steven Erickson and Ian C. Esselman did that big time before they started writing Malazan. They created this whole world with different continents and climate regions and mountains and such. And, and now they've used all that to create a story. Certainly, Robert Jordan did that for The Wheel of Time. Mm -hmm. Tolkien did it as a template for all the ones that followed. And we've kind of given them all the pieces you need. There it is. As you've watched this episode, if you're thinking of key geographic elements that we totally didn't talk about that's why there's a comment box drop them in there what did we miss love to hear about it and anything else you might want to say about this feel free i'll be sure to respond well thanks for chatting about it zach that was fun yeah maybe i have to go draw a map now i don't know <laughs> thanks for watching everyone we'll talk to you next time